R Markdown is one of the most amazing parts of working with R. It lets you combine free text and code into a single reproducible document that you can output to a variety of formats. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to work with this wonderful tool, so let's get started. So here are some of the learning objectives we have for this lesson. If you like, you can pause the video and read through these, but we're going to come back to them at the end of the lesson. So as always, you want to first open our studio and then create a new project. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project now by going to the File menu and then New Project. This will look a bit different if you are on our studio cloud, of course. And then you click on a New Directory. And I'm going to just put this one on my desktop. So I leave it on desktop there. And I can call this something like a R Markdown, R Markdown Intro. OK, Intro and then uh, create project. And then now I'm going to create two folders inside of my project, two subfolders. I go to the Files pane and I click on this New Folder button here and I create one called Data and then I create another one called uh, RMD. So now that I have my two folders, uh, Data and RMD, I'm going to go ahead and create my first R Markdown file. So to do this, you go to the File menu here at the top click on a new file and then R Markdown. If you've never used R Markdown before, you may be prompted at this stage to install a number of packages. That's fine, go ahead and install those. And once you're done, you should get this dialog box here. You can leave all the defaults the way they are and just click directly on OK over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now let me expand my source pane a little bit so I can see a bit more of this document. And now if you scroll through this document, you'll notice uh, two main parts of the document. There are these sections where you have a uh, free text, and there are these uh, small chunks here where you have R code. So it's composed of free text and R code. Go ahead and uh, change some of the text here just to see how this works. It works like a regular document. So I'm going to go ahead and change this from, this is an R, this is an R Markdown document to, this is an amazing R Markdown document, just so we can see what it looks like when you make a change. Now that you've done that, go ahead and save this file with Control S or Command S, depending on your system. And I would recommend saving it in the RMD folder of your uh, project. You can save it with a file with a file name like uh, My First R Markdown. Okay, and let's put some underscores there, just so it looks like a very a clean name. And now we can go ahead and render this document. There's a special word for render in the context of R Markdown, and that is knit. And there's a button to knit this document there. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And after a little while, you should see this pop-up window that shows you a knitted uh, HTML file. As you can see, the free text that was written here has been rendered almost the exact same. And some of the code has been evaluated. So for example, summary cars was evaluated there. And we see the actual summary of the cars data frame. You may also note that some formatting has been applied in the output document. For example, here you had these uh, pairs of asterisks surrounding the word knit. And when uh, that is rendered, you have knit in bold there. That's an example of markdown syntax, which we're going to see very soon. Now go ahead and close this pop-up window. So I'm going to go ahead and close this pop-up window now. And go back to your Files tab and observe now that inside of the RMD folder, you actually have that output HTML that you just created. So this R Markdown was knitted into that HTML. And if you click on that HTML, you can actually open it in your web browser. So here I have the document in my uh, Google Chrome web browser. And you can open that in any other web browser. This HTML file is a portable file. So in theory, you could send it to someone. And they would also be able to open it in their own web browsers. If you're on RStudio Cloud, you may need to first download that file, of course. Hopefully you remember how to do that. You click on the checkbox, then you click on the More icon, and then there should be an option there to export any file that you're working with. So now we can go back to the R Markdown file and observe its parts. The first part is what is called YAML, Y-A-M-L, which stands for uh, Yet Another Markup Language. It's a bit of a funny name that a bunch of programmers came up with. And what this is, is it defines some of the options for your document. 
So we're going to go ahead and change this one specifically here, this output, in order to show you all the different outputs or some of the different outputs that our Markdown is able to create. So the first thing I'm going to try is a Word document. To get a Word document, I just type instead of HTML document there, I'm going to type Word document. And then I click again on the Knit button. And as long as you have a copy of Microsoft Word or LibreOffice or something else that can open a docx file, you should see the output docx file. You can see our, this is an amazing R markdown. You can see the same outputs and the same plots there. So let's go ahead and close that. We can also see that in our files pane now, we have that docx file. The next format we'll try is a PowerPoint slide presentation. For this, you're going to type the following, PowerPoint underscore presentation and then click on knit again. And you get an output like this with the title on a separate page and then each section on a separate slide. As you can see, it's not perfect in this case, but you can work on it and perfect it by changing some of the formatting options, which maybe we will see later. Another common output format you're going to want to use is a PDF. So we can change this output now to a PDF underscore document. But if you try to knit it right now, you're probably going to get an error message because our markdown requires something called LaTeX in order to render PDFs, and most computers don't have LaTeX installed by default, so you're going to have to install LaTeX. LaTeX is a very big application. There is an R package that will let you install a smaller version of LaTeX, which is called a TinyTech. So type into your console install.packages TinyTech. It looks like text, but it's really pronounced tech. Data science people like to judge each other based on whether or not they know the right pronunciation for tiny tech slash LaTeX. So make sure you pronounce that right. And you run that line of code. I won't run it because I already have tiny tech installed. And once the tiny tech R package is installed, now you can install the real tiny tech application on your computer. So you type in tiny tech, and then you see there's a function here that is install tiny tech, and you just run that directly in your console. Although it's called TinyTech, it's still a fairly large file, about 100 or 200 megabytes, so it might take a while to download and install. Well, once that's done, you can clap your hands in glee because now you can actually uh, knit a PDF document. So go ahead now and click on Knit again at the top of your R Markdown file. And you should see a document that looks like this pop up with your uh, PDF uh, output. Now those are some of the most common outputs for R Markdown. I'll show you a few more though that come in extension packages. The first one is called Pretty Doc. So go ahead first and install the package called Pretty Doc. Okay, so you can type this code in, install.packages and then uh, Pretty Doc. And then once you've run that, you can change your output here to the following. You can change it to Pretty Doc and then colon colon HTML Pretty. Hopefully you remember uh, the colon colon uh, indicates that you're getting this thing, this function from that package. So put that in there and then click on knit again. And now you should have a slightly more attractive uh, HTML file. Now there are many different themes for Pretty Doc that you can use. I'll show you one particular one that I like. So I'm going to paste in this code here, okay? And uh, let's get rid of those spaces. So it says uh, output Pretty Doc HTML Pretty colon, and then here you have another tab, theme Leonids, okay? Make sure you get the tabbing right. Here you have one tab and there you have two tabs. Otherwise, uh, this uh, YAML won't work. So then you can click Knit. And you should see an output uh, that looks like this. The beauty of this output is that if you zoom out, then it gives you a nice sidebar so that your page is not too wide. Generally, if your page is too wide, then uh, it's hard to read. Now the last format I'll show you, and possibly the most exciting, is called Flex Dashboard. So go ahead and run this code to install the package Flex Dashboard on your computer. And once that is done, you can use the following output here, flex dashboard colon colon flex underscore dashboard, and it'll give you this dashboard looking uh, output, but the dashboard doesn't have any tabs at the moment. A key feature of dashboards is that they should have tabs. So let's go ahead and change something very quickly so we can get tabs. We're going to change this uh, hashtag hashtag to a single hashtag. That'll change it from a second level header to a first level header. And the first level headers indicate uh, tabs for the Flex dashboard output. So now that we've knitted again, we now have uh, two tabs in this document and you can click between them. This is a very simple dashboard, but they can get arbitrarily complex and they can get very cool looking. So if you're creating dashboards or you need to create dashboards, this is a tool that I would recommend you investigate further, Flex dashboard.
Now there are two main ways to look at your R Markdown file while you are editing it. There is the source mode and there is the visual mode. So far we've been looking at the source mode, but if you click on this button here at the top, you can switch over to visual mode, and visual mode will give you a nice looking uh, Microsoft Word uh, type document with the actual formatting um, applied on the text. So it's much easier to read and much easier to uh, look through. If you have an older R Studio, rather than the uh, visual button being there, you might have a little A button that lives somewhere here that you might need to click on in order to get into this uh, visual mode. So what's the main difference between these two modes? In source mode, you have to write everything with markdown. So for example, if you want to make this bold, you have to use the markdown syntax for that. But in the visual mode, you don't really need to use the markdown. What can you do if you want to make something bold? You can just highlight it and then click on the toolbar there for B. And you have a number of other familiar looking things on the toolbar there. Bold, italics, code, uh, headers, and so on. But although this visual mode is much easier to use, we will spend a little bit of time talking about the source mode, the markdown syntax, for a few reasons. One is that often the visual mode can get quite buggy and you have to return to the source mode to understand what's going wrong. The second reason is that knowing markdown syntax is useful in general outside of our markdown. And lastly, you might be forced to use an RStudio version that doesn't have the visual mode installed yet. For example, RStudio collaborative mode on the web doesn't have this uh, visual mode yet. So now let's talk a little bit about some of that markdown syntax. The first thing you might want to think about is the headers. So there are a number of header levels. I think there are six header levels. You can either put uh, one hashtag there, and that will be the top level, header level one. Or you can put two hashtags. Let's do that now. Two hashtags. That will be header level two. Three hashtags, header le level three, and so on. Let's go ahead and look at this in visual mode so we can see what that would look like. Okay. As you can see, the header level size is decreasing. So this is similar to what it will look like when you output it to any of those formats, the PPTX, the DOCX, and so on. Now let's go back to the source mode. And actually, I just remember that there's actually a quick reference that you can consult uh, in, R, in R Studio. If you go to the Help tab or the Help menu option, and you click here on Markdown Quick Reference, over here in your uh, Help tab, you will actually see some of the stuff we're talking about here. So we just talked about the headers. It goes from header one to five, but here you only see the first three. The next thing we'll talk about is how to italicize and bold things. So if you want to italicize a, um, a piece of text, you just wrap it in a, a pair of asterisks. If you want to bold it, then you wrap it in uh, two pairs of asterisks. So we're going to do that for markdown there. Okay. And when you go back to your visual mode, you will notice that uh, amazing is now uh, italicized and markdown is now uh, bolded. The last thing we'll talk about is how to make bullet points in our markdown. So it's very simple. You just put a hyphen and then tab, and then you type your bullet. So this is going to be bullet one, okay? Then a hyphen tab and bullet two. One thing you have to be careful about is when you're writing in the raw markdown mode, you need to leave, leave spaces between uh, different sections of your text. What do I mean by that? I mean, if I try to type here, um, these are bullets, these are bullets, and I go back now to the visual mode, uh, this section from lines 17 to 19 will become squished together because it's interpreting all of this as just one line. So if I go there, you can see here it says these are bullets, bullet one, bullet two. That did not work. So I have to go back now to my source and actually separate the text from the bullets. And then it should now work. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's put the tab back there. Okay. And now if we go back to visual mode, now we should have the actual bullet. So you need to make sure to leave in the necessary uh, spacing when you're working in that source uh, markdown mode. Another thing I'll quickly show you is how to add hyperlinks to your document. So in our source mode, here's how you do a hyperlink. Let's say you wanted to link to uh, the Graph Courses uh, website. You would say uh, visit our website here. And we want this here to be a clickable link. So we put it in square brackets. Okay. And then in uh, parentheses, we put in the uh, URL we want to go to. In our case, it is HTTPS and then slash slash the graph courses, uh, dot org. And when we go back to our visual mode, we can see now, we should be able to see that this is now a link, okay, that is clickable, and that will take us to uh, the graph courses website. Next, let's look at how to put an image into your R Markdown document. So for this, I actually recommend you first test it out in visual mode. So I'm going to go back to visual mode. And then uh, we're going to put the image here. So to put an image in visual mode, it's as simple as dragging and dropping into the file. So I'm going to go ahead and drag a file that I have here, an image that I have here, okay, this one. 
And I drop that there, and now we can see that the image has been embedded in the document, and we have this uh, option here, or this little button, that lets us uh, drag that to resize it. Now to observe what the syntax for embedding that image looks like, we can go to the source, and what we see is that it's a bit similar to the syntax for the link, with the exception that uh, you have first a, uh, an exclamation point. So let me go ahead and type that from scratch. So this is not so necessary for now. So all we have is a, um, an exclamation point, and then square brackets, and then in, uh, in a pair of parentheses, you have the path to your, um, to your image. And in the square brackets here, you can put uh, the caption for the image. We can say this is an image, okay? And let's delete this other one, and now go back to the visual mode, and we'll see that that image is embedded. So when you resize the image, it adds on that additional piece of a markdown that tells us, uh, that tells it the document what size to make the image. Now what actually happened when you drag that image into your RMD file is that our studio created a new subfolder inside of the folder where your RMD lives called images and put that picture there. What do I mean by that? What I mean is if we go now to our files tab, okay, and look at that, um, RMD, so look at this RMD folder that we created where we put our R markdown. We can see that a new folder there has been created by our studio called images, and it puts that sample image there. So you can see that now how the, this address comes about. So the address is images sample.jpg. Uh, so this is a relative path as you might uh, have intuited. So, so actually right now we can open up that folder in our computer's um, file explorer or finder by clicking here and then um, show folder a new window. And we can see that uh, folder with images. So if I dropped another image in there now, so let me just drop one of my random screenshots in there, okay? Then we can actually reference this image in the similar way to the way we reference the other one. So let me quickly do that. I'll call this one a sample two, okay? And I can go back to my uh, our markdown in source mode, and I'm going to put in the second image here called sample two JPEG. Okay, and if I go now to visual mode, you can see that that other um, image has been uh, added to the document. That is as far as I'm going to go in teaching you markdown syntax. You're going to learn a lot of it as you go along. So usually what I would recommend is first you try out the feature in visual mode, and then you go back to the source mode to see what the actual markdown uh, looks like for that particular uh, formatting feature. One additional thing to note about this YAML metadata section is that you can actually customize it with the Output Options uh, graphic user interface of RStudio. Specifically, beside the Knit button, you have that gear icon, and if you click on it, there's this option here called Output Options. And here you can select the format. So for example, if we change this from HTML here to a Word, and we click on OK, then it changes the actual uh, YAML there, okay? And we can uh, customize it with a bit more um, specificity. So for example, with HTML, we can choose to include a table of contents, and then we can decide how many, uh, what's the depth for that table of contents? Do we want just first, second, and third level headers? Or do we want all the headers and so on? We can change the syntax hi highlighting, we can apply a CSS file. Again, we can't really go too much into depth because that will take uh, 20 hours. So you're just gonna have to go ahead and um, play with these and see how they work. So next thing we're going to do is look at uh, code chunks. But uh, before we look at that, let's actually clean up this document a bit uh, so we don't have too many uh, extraneous things. So I'm going to get rid of most of these things which we don't need. Actually, I get rid of all of it for now, but you don't have to do all this deleting. I just want our document to be very clean and smooth. So now I'll show you how to insert a new R code chunk. So to insert an R code chunk, you need this weird syntax. You need three back ticks and then a pair of um, braces and then R and then you press a bunch of enters and then you close that code chunk with uh, another three back ticks. And this is an R code chunk where you can type uh, R code. Of course, that is very painful to type, so you should never do that by hand. What you should do instead is either use the menu option there, you have that button there, that C, that C, uh, that green C, and if you click on that, you have uh, the R code chunk option. You can use other languages, as you can see there. So if you click on that, then you get a code chunk. But I really do recommend that you use the shortcut for this because you're gonna do this many, many times. So the shortcut for this is uh, on Mac, Command Option I, okay, and you do that. And on Windows, I think it's um, Control Alt I. And so you get your code chunk that way. 
So as you can see, the code chunk is usually a slightly different color from the rest of the document. And if you want to run code that's in the code chunk, you can either put your cursor in the code chunk and just press a command enter as you normally would uh, in an R script, or there's a little green play button at the top right of each code chunk which you can click on, and that will also uh, run the code that's in that chunk. Now as you've noticed by default, the output of that chunk, that code chunk is being put right here inside of your R markdown file. Some people like that, but some people like me hate it, so we prefer to just show it only in the console. So to do that, you're going to click on this uh, gear icon here beside your knit button. And over there, there's an option to change from chunk output inline to chunk output in console. So I prefer chunk output in console, but it's really up to you what you prefer. And I'll click on our remove existing output. And now when I run this code, it won't show up in the uh, RMD itself. It'll show up only in the uh, console, as you can see there. Now the next thing we're going to talk about are uh, code chunk options. But before that, let me just go ahead and knit this document so we can see what it looks like at the moment. So I get rid of these uh, extraneous chunks. And let's put some uh, free text just so we have something to contrast with the chunks. So I put this as some free text, okay. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and let's also change the title so we have a nice title. We can say my first our markdown document, okay. And now we can knit that and see what it looks like. So here is what that document looks like at the moment. Now let's think about some ways to modify the output of this code chunk, this R code chunk where we just added two and two. Now the first chunk option is a name for your chunk. You can name your chunk, and the way to name it is after this R um, letter there, you just type any name, so something like chunk name, okay? And uh, in general, I would recommend you only use letters here for your chunk names because other characters tend to give errors, so I recommend just letters. There we're using the camel case to give that chunk a name. Uh, the main usefulness of chunk names at the moment will not be obvious to you. I'm just showing you that it exists. It's used for a cross-referencing between chunks um, later on, and it's also helpful for error debugging, but those are intermediate things which I won't talk about. Just know that you can name your chunks in case you see it uh, somewhere. The next parameter or option for your chunk is the echo option. Echo can be either true, which is on, or false, which is off. Let me show you what that looks like. The default uh, for echo is true. So what we're gonna do now is change that to echo equals false. Okay, notice what I did there. I just put a comma after the chunk name and I put echo equals false. I could also have, uh, in case I didn't wanna name my chunk, I could also have something like this, okay? Now, uh, what is gonna happen? First of all, let's look at this in visual mode and notice that it won't make any difference. It'll look the same, okay? Echo equals false. And now if I niche that, this code chunk is not going to be echoed in the output. I will only see the result of the code chunk. So let's uh, knit that and see what that means. So as you can see, we only see the result of the code chunk, that is four. We don't see the actual code that was evaluated, the two plus two. That's because code echo is turned off. The next option I'll show you is eval. Eval stands for evaluate. So I'll stay here in visual mode, and I put a comma here, and eval equals, oh, it even gives me the option, eval equals false, okay? And when you turn off eval, you're going to basically not evaluate your code. Now, if we, if we knit this document at the moment, it's going to give us no output, and I'll explain why in a second. So it gives us no output, but if we turn off, uh, if we remove this option, echo equals false, which brings us back to the default of echo equals true, and now we knit it, let's see what's gonna happen. So what we can see now is that the code is echoed, the code shows up, but it's not evaluated, and therefore we don't see uh, the result. Hopefully that makes sense. Now you can also use the option include equals false. Include equals false just means don't echo and don't eval. So it's the same thing as putting those two together. And when you knit this, you'll get, again, no output. You're not going to see the code and you're not going to see the output of the code. You just see this as some free text and nothing else in that document. The next option I'll show you is the message option, message. And what message does is it tells R whether or not to show any messages generated in the code. This code doesn't generate any message, so it's not uh, relevant here. I'll put in code that I know generates message, uh, a message, and that's a library tidyverse, okay? So if I run li library tidyverse without any chunk options, let's see what's gonna happen. So I knit that, and we have a bunch of ugly package startup messages. As you can imagine, this is probably not something you want to show your audience, so you're gonna wanna hide that. In order to hide that, you use a message equals a false. And when we knit that now, all those messages will be hidden and we won't see that, that output. 
as you can see, this is much neater. Now for all of these options that I've showed you, there's actually a trick to getting them. And that's so you can click on this gear icon here in the uh, our markdown chunk. And it will show you all of those different options, whether to show warnings, messages, uh, whether to show the output, uh, just the output only, the code and output, and so on. If we try something now like uh, show output only, it will update our document with echo equals false. And so uh, you don't actually have to type out the parameter yourself. You can use that option. But it's helpful to know what exactly uh, those are. The next thing I'll show you are what are called uh, global options. These are options that you can set, which will apply to all of the code chunks uh, below. And the best way to um, get to these is by opening up a new R Markdown. Whenever you open up a new R Markdown with the File menu, so File and then New File R Markdown, in the very first code chunk, we're going to see here how to access those global options. So it's inside of the Knitter package. You get this Ops chunk op object. Then you get the uh, Set component of that. And then you set the uh, global um, option. So here we're setting the global option echo equals true. Let's bring that into our first R markdown here and make a new, um, a new chunk. And I'm going to put that code in there. And we're going to set now, um, let's say we wanted the global option here to be echo equals false. Echo equals false. That means don't show the R code, only show the output. Then for any code chunks below, for example, this one here, 2 plus 2, and then this next one here, 3 plus 3, we're only going to show the output because we've set the global chunk option to echo uh, equals false. So let's go ahead and knit that and see if that worked. So as you can see, we only see the outputs. We don't see the actual code, which means echo equals false worked. But usually, you don't want to show this global chunk option in um, your output. So for that option as well, or for that chunk as well, you're going to want to set echo equals uh, false. Okay. So now that you knit that, then you have the kind of output that you probably want. There's one more button at the top right of these code chunks that we haven't talked about. And that is this one in the middle here. What that one does is it runs all code chunks above. So if I click on that there, it's going to run this chunk, this chunk, and any other chunks that we had above. But in this case, we only have two. So as you can see, that actually runs that code chunk there. Just to make sure you're, you are aware or you believe me, let's do that again. And now you can see that this updates to 7 because it's running this code chunk and giving us 7 there. Now let's talk about something called inline code. Inline code is going to be very helpful when you're creating any kind of report. So what is inline code? So let's take the example of the uh, women data set. So imagine that in the women data set, we wanted to calculate uh, the maximum or find the maximum height in this data set. So remember this data set here? Is what, this is what it looks like. You have a bunch of heights and a bunch of weights. So imagine that I wanted to get the maximum women height, OK? And I wanted to output that into my R markdown. I might want to write something like this. The maximum women's height is, height is, OK? And put the value there, that maximum there, OK? So what I could do is I could open up an inline R code chunk by clicking on the back, back tick, or by pressing the back tick, and then uh, putting in that code there, all right? So maximum women height, and then closing that back tick there, so closing that small uh, code section. And if I run that now, let's go ahead and first of all delete this. OK, now I'll leave that in, actually. So let's knit that right now. OK, and it seems it didn't work because I missed a crucial thing. So I'll leave in this mistake in the edit just so it reminds you of how to do this because this is a common mistake. Uh, so instead of just putting this uh, in just back ticks, you actually have to put first the R letter somewhere in this chunk here or somewhere in this uh, section. So you put first R and then the code. And now uh, Knitter, or R Markdown, will interpret it as R code. And now it should give us the maximum woman's height is 72. And if you want, you could predefine a variable. So I'm going to predefine a variable here that is max height. OK? And I can give that variable here. OK? And that will also give us the same output. As you can see, it gives us that same output. The maximum woman's height is 72. This feature is obviously going to be super useful when you're creating papers or uh, any kind of report because you don't have to type in your um, numbers manually. You can get those numbers dynamically from your actual data. So if your data changes because of some error, for example, you don't have to go back and change whatever you wrote before. You can just re the document and all of your numbers will be automatically updated.
Now the next thing we'll talk about is uh, how to output tables into your R Markdown document. So I'm going to make a new section uh, in this R Markdown and just call it uh, tables. Okay. And uh, there are three main packages that we recommend for outputting tables in your R Markdown. So the first thing I'll show you is how do tables print if you just uh, put the table directly. So remember that women is that table. Okay. This is an example. Usually your tables would be slightly more uh, interesting than that. So now I click on knit and you'll see that it outputs the table as just a raw text like that, which obviously is not very pretty if you're creating a report. So there are three packages that we recommend for printing tables, and I'll just paste in this code here that will uh, help you install and load all of them. There's the uh, flex table package. Flex table we recommend for very, simple for very simple tables that you want to output to many different formats. So this supports uh, PowerPoint, DocX, PDF, basically all the different formats. So this is what we would recommend for a simple table, many formats. GT I recommend for a complex table, but one that you mostly want to keep to uh, the HTML format. You will see that the HTML format is the, the most uh, flexible. And finally, Reactable, uh, you, you, you want to use if you want to output a large table that you want people to be able to uh, scroll through. So I'll quickly show you what each of those look like. So run that code to install those packages. And I'm just going to um, uh, print the women data set with those three different uh, packages. Flex table. Flex table package has a function in it called flex table. Okay. So we'll put flex table, flex table women. Then a GT has a function called GT. So we do that as well. And then reactable also has the um, eponymous function uh, reactable. So we do that as well. And now I'm going to uh, knit this document, and we should see those three tables uh, outputted. So now we can see them. This is the uh, flex table table. It looks quite nice, quite simple. You can make this uh, quite complex. This is the GT table. It also looks simple, but you can make this very, very complex. I'll show you some examples in a second. And this is what the reactable looks like. As you can see with the reactable, you can actually um, go through the different rows. So it shows you the first 10 rows, and you can click on this button to advance to the rest of the rows. So you could put like a data set that had 500 or maybe even 1,000 rows into your HTML file and just send that to someone, and they'll be able to access that data uh, that way. Now, to learn how to use the table-making packages is beyond the scope of this course, but I recommend you spend some time uh, looking at the help files for these or looking at their websites. So just Google Flex Table R Package, go to the website, the help website, and there'll be some wonderful walkthroughs there that show you how to make some beautiful tables. One thing you can use to inspire yourself for table making is actually uh, the RStudio table making contest. So if you Google RStudio table contest, uh, a bunch of nerds on the internet um, apply to this table contest. And let's look at the 2021, for example. They all submit tables made with different R packages and a bunch of people in um, RStudio judge, which are the best. And you can see what some of these look like. You can see this is an example table. As you can see, that's pretty, uh, pretty nice looking. Or here you have a dynamic table that's created, I think, with Shiny. And uh, here you have a table that has some radial plots. So you can really uh, go wild with these uh, table packages. Uh, now let's quickly talk about plots. The main thing you might want to know about plots is how to customize the size of your plots. So I'm going to make a new um, chunk here, and um, or first a new header, actually. A new header and plots, OK? And then I'm going to make a new ggplot. So first, let's load the ggplot package, or maybe the whole tidyverse. Actually, let's take this Pac-Man payload and put it at the start of our markdown. Sorry about this very uh, scattered markdown. Generally, you should put your package loading functions at the start of your, um, of your script. So let's add to that tidyverse. Okay, And let's run that. And ggplot, as you may recall, is a package that comes as part of the uh, tidyverse me meta package. So I'm going to do a very quick ggplot, ggplot, um, let's say women, and then plus geome histogram, and then let's do aesthetics, let's just plot the heights of the different women um, on a histogram. Actually, I changed my mind, let's do a geome, um, geome point and do a scatter plot uh, with height and uh, weight, okay? So if I just run that code here, we should see what our plot looks like. So this is a scatter plot of weight against height. Now if I knit that document, it's going to show us that uh, plot output inside of our output HTML. Let's see what that looks like. You can see that plot output there. Now to customize the size of that output figure, I recommend using this button here, Options, and then clicking on Use Custom Figure Size. And you can customize the width and the height in inches. So we can put something here like uh, maybe we want a, a very um, 
a very squeezed up plot. So we do width of three, width of three and height of seven. Okay, and I press enter. I think I need to zoom out a bit more. Okay, but it gives us the options there. Fig height equals five, fig width equals three. If I knit that again, you have a much more squeezed um, figure. Okay, as you can see, it's quite horizontally uh, compressed. So that's how you can modify the plot options in your uh, RMD. So that is as far as we're going to go in terms of the fundamentals of our markdown, but we've really only touched the very surface. So if you want to dig deeper, one way you can inspire yourself is by going to the uh, gallery. Our studio has a nice gallery. If you go to this link here, which I'll paste in here, uh, tinyurl.com slash rmd hyphen gallery, and you click on there, you'll see a bunch of different uh, output formats that other people have used um, that our markdown or our studio has compiled. So you can see a bunch of uh, interactive documents with cool maps, HTML widgets. Um, you can see some cool dashboards using that flesh flex dashboard tool that I showed you. You can see different presentations. You have PowerPoint presentations, but you also have a bunch of different um, HTML format presentations that let you do very cool things. Uh, you can use our markdown for books. Uh, many people uh, write books in our markdown, specifically an extension called a uh, bookdown. You can use our markdown to make very simple websites, as you can see there. Uh, you can use reusable templates, for example, if you're writing your thesis or if you're writing for a specific journal, you can use some of the templates that exist for those. Uh, you can use it to create a package vignettes, as you can see here. A vignette is just a small compilation of how the package works. Most of the uh, HTML files that we're using as part of this Graph Courses course are also created with our markdown. So as you can see, our markdown is really an incredible tool that's very uh, versatile. One small thing that comes to mind now that I'm talking about the beauty of our markdown is uh, what is Quarto. So because our markdown has been so successful, the R Studio team is trying to bring the beauty of our markdown to many other uh, programming languages like uh, Python and Julia and Observable. And so they're creating this new thing called uh, Quarto. And Quarto is really going to be the next version of our markdown. So at some point in the next uh, one, two, three years, many people are actually going to start switching from our markdown to Quarto. But the good news is that it is extremely similar. So 99% of the things you learn with our markdown will apply uh, to this new uh, format called Quarto. So don't worry too much. You are not going to go obsolete. And one resource that we definitely recommend as you continue to learn our markdown is the official cheat sheet. So if you go here to help and then uh, cheat sheets, you'll see that there's an option for our markdown cheat sheet and there's also there's also the our markdown reference guide you can try both of them but the the most nicely formatted is the cheat sheet if you click on that uh, it will trigger a download to your computer of the following cheat sheet which I'll show you here okay so you can go through that in your own time and see which of the things from there you already recognize and which things are new to you and try playing with uh, the our markdown files based on what you see here so now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to reproduce some of the analyses we've been doing on that Ebola data set in the context of an R Markdown file. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new R Markdown file. I think I already have one here open, the untitled one, okay? And I'll delete uh, much of this. I'll leave the setup chunk in. And uh, let's go ahead and give it a title there. We can call it uh, Ebola Analysis, Ebola Analysis. And um, instead of HTML document, we can use that pretty format. We can use a pretty doc um, HTML pretty. Okay. And we can go ahead and save this as well in our RMD um, folder. So uh, command S or file and save or save as. All right, so let's go ahead and save that inside of the RMD um, folder and call it uh, Ebola analysis, Ebola analysis. Okay. What you should then do is go to the following URL. So you're going to go to this URL a tinyurl.com slash Ebola hyphen scripts, okay? And that will bring you to this GitHub gist. You're going to copy, copy this code from the GitHub gist, okay? And we're gonna pull that into our RMD, and we're going to see how to make that into a bunch of our RMD sections. So let me zoom out a bit more so I can see more of my code. Uh, so I put a new chunk and I paste in all that code, and we're going to break this up into a bunch of separate chunks. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but the first thing we should do uh, now is uh, put the data into the data folder. You can see here in line 28, if you recall, here's where we um, imported the data set, Ebola Sierra Leone, with the read CSV function. So we need to actually get that data set. Where do you get it from? You get it from the same link we've been using before. You go to, um, let's open a new one here, bit.ly slash view hyphen Ebola hyphen data. Okay. 
and it'll bring you to this uh, Google Sheets thing, and you download that. Once you download that data set, you can drag and drop it into the data folder of your R Markdown intro project. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now. Here it is, Ebola Sierra Leone. I drag and drop it into the data folder specifically. And now that that data set is in the needed data folder, we can run through some of this code to make sure that it all works. And after we verify that it works, then we'll split it up into separate chunks and put in some nice headers and some nice uh, contextualizing uh, text. So let me go ahead and run some of this now. I run this sets of lines to install uh, slash load the needed packages, okay? Now in order to load data here, as you recall, I can put my cursor into those, um, those quotes and press tab, but now we're going to get a problem which uh, we warned you about. So now that I press tab, normally what I should see here are the, um, the subfolders and files that are inside of my main project folder. So let's go to the main project folder here. What I should see here are data, RMD, and then inside of those, the other files. But I can't see the data folder from here. So data doesn't show up. And this is due to a weird behavior of RMDs, where the RMD always takes as its home folder the um, whatever folder the RMD itself resides in. So the RMD does not respect your project folder. What that means is, I know this is a bit confusing, what that means is when you're working in an RMD, you should generally copy this code out here into your console, and from your console, you can press tab, and now from here we can see the actual uh, data folder. So I'll say that again, when we're inside of the RMD, the RMD can only see the things that are inside of the folder where the RMD itself lives. Okay, so the RMD is a bit uh, selfish, it's a bit uh, nationalistic in that sense. So you have to pull out that code, put it in your console, and then we can access uh, data, all right? And then from there we can get the Ebola Sierra Leone CSV. All right, now I'm gonna take this code, put it back here, and now there's an additional problem, which is that because this is still inside of an RMD, if I try to knit that, let's go ahead and try to knit that. I'll remove all of this stuff here, and then I'll try to knit this. And as you can see, it says, uh, error, data, Ebola, Sierra Leone, CSV, blah, 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 does not exist because the RMD is still looking inside of its own folder. The jingoistic RMD is just looking inside of where it lives to see where to find the data. It's not looking outside. So what you have to do now is use that package called here, which I had introduced you to before. So if we go back now to our script, okay, we can still remove that. We're going to wrap this now in here, and here we'll force the RMD to respect our project folder. And now finally we can actually run this code and it will uh, import that data set. So let's put, let's put some of that code that I got rid of, let's put some of that back just to make sure that this works. So I'm going to uh, knit this now, and it seems to work without any errors. So you can see now that we load the Ebola Sierra Leone and we run this district tab and we have that district tab uh, output there. So now that we have verified that the data importing code works, we can go ahead and try to neaten up this RMD. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this uh, load package code and put it up there in that uh, setup chunk above, okay? And because the setup chunk has um, include equals false, uh, it won't show us any of that code because we don't want that in our report. I'll also turn off a message, so message here equals false as well so we don't get those package startup messages, okay? Then uh, I'm going to get rid of all of this. I think the load, the load data can also go into the setup chunk, okay? It makes sense for load data to go into the setup chunk, all right? Then instead of these R code headers for cases by district and visualize categorical variables, we can make those actual uh, markdown headers. So I'm gonna pull that out here and call that uh, cases by district, okay? And I'll say this, uh, table shows counts of cases by districts maybe, okay? All right, and I'll put that in the chunk there. Okay, wonderful. And for this, I won't want to echo this um, output. I don't wanna show the code, I just wanna show the output. So I set echo equals false, all right? Then to break up this chunk, I press again a command option I, and then I'm going to make a new section, a new header, and call it a visualize categorical variables. All right, visualize categorical variables. And I'll make a final uh, section, a fi final header that's called a visualized numeric variables. So visualize numeric variables. And I get rid of this comment because we don't really need it anymore. So now we are ready to uh, knit this document. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to click on knit. 
and let's see what the final output looks like. So hopefully it will uh, look quite neat. All right, so there you have your title, your date, each of your sections and your outputs. Well, now I realize we didn't use our table package, so let's go back and do that. And you have each of the different uh, plots that we created. Let's go back and quickly do uh, the table. So for the table, let's use, let's say, the uh, flex table package. So I'm going to add flex table to the list of um, packages that are loaded. And I will wrap this one here, this district tab object, in the flex table function. That way we can output it instead of as just a text table, we can output it as an actual uh, nicely formatted table. So let's see what that looks like now. And there you go, you have that nicely formatted table. It's not really perfect, but it's good enough maybe for sharing internally within your department. So congratulations on getting through this fairly long lesson. Here are some of the learning objectives that we had set out at the start of the lesson. See if you can recall these. If you can't, then you may want to go back and rewatch the relevant sections of the video. So hopefully by now, you feel like you can create and knit an R Markdown document that contains code and some free text. Hopefully by now you know the different output formats, including a HTML, PDF, Word, PowerPoint, Flex dashboards, and a bunch of others. Hopefully by now you understand basic R Markdown syntax, or basic Markdown syntax rather, for bold, italics, bullet points, and things like that. Okay. Hopefully now you know how to use R code chunk options, including eval, echo, and uh, message. All right. Hopefully you know the syntax for inline R code. Remember that uh, when we put the maximum height of women inside of the actual text. Okay. Hopefully you recognize some useful packages for table formatting in R Markdown, Flex Table, GT, and the others. Okay. And hopefully you understand how to use the here package to force R Markdown files to uh, use the project folder as the working directory. So you remember that uh, R Markdown likes to use only the folder where it itself lives as the working directory. So if you have your data folder outside of that, then you have to use here in order to access that. If you don't, if that doesn't make sense to you, you might want to go back and rewatch the video and actually try uh, playing with the folder structure, playing with the code by yourself to make sure that that makes sense. So welcome to the beginning of the rest of your life. Now that you know the essentials of this Swiss Army knife that is our markdown, you are empowered to go forth and share your work in rich and reproducible formats. I wish you the best of luck on this exciting journey. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. For more resources, visit our website, where you can track your progress, access interactive quizzes and lesson notes, and connect with our teachers and other learners like you. And if you'd like a more guided experience, we also offer live online boot camps with expert help. So join us at thegraphcourses.org to start your learning journey today.